Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, I've got a really good surprise for you. One of my best friends of all time just came down to visit me in the office, and I thought it would be fun to just invite him in on video. You might recognize him. This is... Hey, it's Ian, former <laughs> manager of Karate Mart, current friend. <laughs> <laughs> you probably remember Ian from all the previous videos. <laughs> so today, I'm actually going to have Ian help me describe some of these weapons we have. And uh, before we begin, though, if you could just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. <laughs> Alright, so the first item we wanted to look at today are these two things. So I'm going to hand this one to you and take a look at this guy. We saw these the other day and I just thought these were so interesting and I didn't really have much of a background on them. But these are actually called the Ulu knives, right? Ulu knives, yeah. And um, so some of you watching this video might actually <laughs> <laughs> Might actually be laughing because generally an ulu knife is more of a, a knife for food preparation or something. But these knives were actually kind of re-envisioned to be more of like tactical ulu knives. So really cool designs. Um, I just liked them because I was like, wow, this uh, this actually is like a knuckle knife or something. Yeah, right? you could use it to cut food too, but you could use it to cut other things, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got two different styles here. We've got this one, which has like this black, I'm going to guess this is like a nylon. Like a nylon. I don't think that that has the fiberglass impregnation, but um, it's no. it's got a, the metal's fully inside of it, so it wouldn't need that. Yeah, yeah. So like a nylon or a grivery, but it's really comfortable. I mean, it's not like rubberized grip or anything, but that is super comfortable. So I like that. And then what's this guy? So this one's got the wood grip on it, which also looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just tell these are well made. It's not like, you know, a lot of a lot of times when you get knives, you'll see that they're kind of like shaky on the handles well, or whatever. The, but the handle lines up with the with the metal really nicely too. That's a pretty smooth edge right there. Yeah. How do you think they did that? Do you think they actually like used a belt sander after or some sort of grinder? Uh, after? I, th I think they put them together. I think they made them separately and put them together. But the seam is really minimal. Yeah. I yeah. like it. I like it. So these things are actually really cool. Um, definitely check them out on KarateMart.com. Uh, but we've got some more items to show you today. Oh, a sword cane. <laughs> a sword cane. <laughs> so, so I've been doing a lot of sword canes in our videos lately. Uh, but I came across this one recently, and I thought it was super cool. Um, it's kind of similar to the walking stick uh, hammer, war hammer that we looked at last week. It's probably about the same size, which could be nice, like if you had to actually climb up a mountain or something, you've got that. But what's really obvious about this one is that the weight... It's heavy. It's heavy. And it's the heavy. weight is like all right up in the head of this yeah. thing. Um, because they wanted to make it like a war hammer. Yeah. And so here's a couple things about it. Um, first off, to take out the sword, you just kind of pull it out, which I like. I like how easy that was. It had a nice pop to it, too. It had a nice pop, but it was in there like really solid. Um, I guess my biggest concern with this weapon was that if you swing it like a hammer, I was slightly concerned that this would actually fly out. Or if you hit something really hard, that that's gonna knock out. But I've actually been playing with this a little bit, and that's not easy to get out of there. And um, I guess the other thing I like about it is that the sword isn't so long that it's awkward to get out of the case. It's like a good size to give you some reach, but it's not like, crazy short or crazy long. Um, it's actually a really good size for the sword cane and this feels super solid. Like this whole thing is probably right around four pounds for the entire thing. Um, but it feels really good. And what, what do you think well, that's so, made of? Well, so this is, well, it's got three gaskets here to to seal it in. That's what okay. that popping is. Okay. Here so that's why it holds in so good. good. Okay. So you think that's going to stay in pretty tight? Yeah. That's yeah, that's in there. That okay. in there. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. And then this is also made with that fiberglass reinforced nylon again that uh, I really like. I mean, you see a lot of things yeah. that are made with that, yeah. like camping axes. What, what else do you see with that? You see that a lot in automotive applications too. Okay. Um, gotcha. They make a lot of car parts with that because it's so sturdy. Mm -hmm. And unlike the, uh, the war hammer from last week, like the tip is actually a little bit sharper on this thing. So I could see actually puncturing something really well with that. Like, 
I, I think this is a pretty sweet tool, honestly. Um, just remember, things like sword canes, there's a lot of laws around them, and you can get in big trouble for carrying a sword cane. Uh, so definitely check your local laws before even considering carrying something like this. But I could see this just being awesome for like camping application or something like that. So, all right, so the next thing, the next one. Which one is this, the knuckle hatchet? The stone washed knuckle hatchet. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I always like the I always like the knuckle knives. Yeah. So I I saw this recently, and it just looked different from anything I had ever really seen before. So I mean, it it almost has like that karambit style loop on the end. Yeah, that's um, cool. And kind of like a a fist blade. Uh, I, I like how you can put your thumb back there and then really get some control with it. And the blade itself is really sharp. That's um, that's definitely a stainless steel. Um, I actually think this would probably be a good, pretty good thrower, honestly. Yeah. It's only about five ounces, um, but I, I think it'd be pretty awesome to throw. But I just generally just like that because it looked so unique. You guys still throw knives around here occasionally? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. And yeah, if you haven't seen like our throwing star video, definitely check that out on YouTube because it's a it's a pretty good video. But uh, yeah, yeah so I'm digging that one. Got a little grip right there. Yeah. That's cool. I dig that. You know, I might actually test this one out and possibly those Ulu knives in a future video. Um, we're kind of in a rush today because I'm leaving out for a, uh, a convention out in uh, Las Vegas next week. So that's why I'm recording this video a little bit early. And as you can see, my shirt is just a little bit sweatier than usual, but that's because we just got in a big shipment and I like to help out and to put everything away and take stuff off trucks. So that is why I'm all sweaty, but that's, you know, that's just part of the job. <laughs> All right, so let's see. The last item I wanted to show off today is this hidden stun gun flashlight. And we do a lot of stun guns here. As you know, we you know do a lot of stun guns in the videos. And this one in specific, the thing I like about this one particularly is that it's just nice and compact. Like this actually looks to me, this looks just like a flashlight. So. I like I like hidden weapons that are inconspicuous towards you know what just a normal flashlight would be. So I could actually keep this in my pocket, um, you know, pull it out if you needed it. If you're walking around at night, um, you know, you just use the flashlight portion of it, and you know, it's actually a really nice LED flashlight. And it's rechargeable too. It's rechargeable. Yeah, that's actually a good point. It's got the USB port back here. Comes with a little USB charger. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and it's comfortable too. It's like uh, that kind of rubberized grip feel to it. Um, and the manufacturer stated that it's 300,000 volts. But as we all know, you know, the volts don't really mean anything when it comes to stun guns. It actually just kind of tells you how far the electricity will go through clothing or something like that. Yeah. What do you really want to look at with stun guns? What would you think? Um, like I hear a lot about amps and um, it's kind of a comp, I mean like there's a whole technical thing about voltage and amperage and skin resistance and whatever. Okay. Um, you know, some we had a YouTuber comment on one of my previous videos about micro columns, I think it was. Um, and I found it really interesting. So if you know more about these things, if you have a, a good idea about what is important, definitely comment, let us know. Um, I'm always super curious about that. There's just so much misleading information online um, and the manufacturers are never really straightforward with how the stun guns are yeah. supposed to be, yeah. how strong they are. So as you know from previous videos, I have to try out every stun gun that we get because I have to know if it's effective or not. So we're just gonna go ahead and test this out. And, oh jeez, <laughs> jeez. You seem so. scared. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, jeez. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. You actually did it. <laughs> All right, give me a good one okay. right in the arm. Okay. Ah! <laughs> You know, I usually, I usually have Amanda do this because she's so ginger and sweet and just gives me a little tap on the arm. But well, I, thought no, a good, I thought a good one and then a, and then a scary one come in slow. <laughs> okay, so that, that hurt. Um, but it, if you saw like what, two weeks ago when I did the, um, 
the big stun baton. That thing really hurt. So this thing is not that bad as far as that goes, but definitely <laughs> effective. That that hurt pretty bad. I think if you held it on someone, you could definitely take them down. But with stun guns, did it, keep, did it keep going? Did it, it was hurting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but um, with stun guns, it's important that you always know additional martial arts techniques to protect yourself in case this isn't strong enough to take down an attack. Yeah. Or, um, but I like stun guns, and also check your local laws on stun guns too. But if you have any questions on any of these products, definitely leave them in the comments below. And check out KarateMar.com because we have all kinds of really interesting weapons on there. I'm like so nervous. Just <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're cool. <laughs> uh, but until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday. Take care, guys.